my friends today we're going to finish chapter two of friendship according to Humphrey where we left off Mrs. Brisbane now has a class frog Og the frog and Humphrey went out of his lock that doesn't lock and went to go meet Og the frog and Og the frog jumped and said boing and now Humphrey doesn't know if Og is being kind to him or if he can even understand him so today we're going to finish reading chapter two I scribbled away for several hours, and Og was pretty quiet, except for some annoying splashing. Goodness, I can manage to groom myself and get a drink of water without making that much noise. Suddenly, the room filled with blazing light, and I heard a familiar cling, cling, cling. It was the Longfellow School custodian, Aldo Amato. Be of good cheer, cause Aldo's here, a voice announced. Aldo, my friend, I squeaked as I jumped on my wheel and began spinning happily. Otto parked his cleaning cart near the door and clumped over to my cage. Happy New Year, Humphrey. You're looking handsome and healthy, he told me. Aldo is a true friend. And you the same, I squeaked back. Who's your buddy? Aldo glanced at Og. Hey, I know you. You're the frog from down the hall. What are you doing here? You don't want to know, I squeaked. Aldo turned back to me. Calm down, pal. I brought you something. He reached into his pocket and unwrapped the most beautiful tiny tomato I'd ever seen. I could have cried. Thanks, Aldo, I squeaked as I tucked the treat in my cheek pouch. You're welcome, Humphrey. Aldo looked over at Og again. Sorry, I don't know what frogs eat. You don't want to know that either, I assured him. Aldo grabbed a paper bag and pulled up a chair close to me. May I join you for dinner, he asked. He didn't need to ask. We'd share many happy evenings while he took his dinner break. I took a deep breath. Aldo gave off a pleasant smell of chalk dust and pine spray. He smelled that way that I imagine a forest smells. Somewhere way, way, way back in time, wild hamsters must have lived in forests down in the sweet earthy pines of rotting leaves and fallen pine cones. Yep, Aldo smelled like home. Mind if we have a little talk? He asked. Of course I didn't. I've been trying to get old Lumpy to talk all evening. I've got something to tell you, Humphrey. Remember how I gave my girlfriend Maria an engagement ring for Christmas? Well, I've got bigger news. On New Year's Day, she and I ran off and got married. He held up his left hand. A gold band glittered on one finger. I'd hope you'd be happy, 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 I squeaked with delight. Thanks, pal. I told her that you'd be at my wedding, but we decided to get hitched quietly. You understand. Naturally, I squeaked. Yes. After all, I had helped get them together in the first place, and when I met Maria, she was as nice as Aldo. Yep, I'm an old married man now, real happy. But I started thinking, Humphrey, I like this job, but it doesn't pay a whole lot. Aldo paused to chew off a bite of a sandwich. I'd like to have kids and a house and maybe raise a couple of hamsters of my own. Fine with me, as long as he didn't raise any frogs. I sure would love to have my earnings free to spend with my family. Pal, my evenings free to spend with my family. Pal, I've got to find a way to get a better job. You can do it, I squeaked. Aldo was quieter than usual as he finished his dinner. I spun on my wheel to entertain him, but he was lost in thought. Finally, he folded up his bag. Guess I'm not good company tonight, Humphrey. I bet that frog makes better conversation than I do. Fat chance, I squeaked. After Aldo cleaned the room and left, I did some thinking. Personally, I believed Aldo was already as fine of a human as I'd seen. I'd miss him if he worked somewhere else, but he was my friend, so if he wanted a better job, I wanted to help him. I started jotting down ideas in my notebook and lost track of time. Later, I heard splashing. I'd almost forgotten about you-know-who next door. Hey, what's shaking, Og? I called out to him. Maybe he thought over his bad behavior and wanted to apologize for his bad manners. There was no reply, just splish, splash, splish. Personally, the idea of being covered in water is disgusting to me. I prefer to groom myself in the time-honored way, using my tongue, teeth, paws, and toenails. I thoroughly clean myself every day. The students in room 26 love to watch me. At least they did before google eyes came along still if i have to share a table with him i figured i must try 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 again to be friendly having a nice bath i asked there was no answer not even another splash but there was another sound the crickets they were alive after all og would have to eat noisy food my nutri nibbles and mighty mealworms didn't make a sound until i crunched down on them but the crickets whom I actually felt sorry for, made a funny singing song. Chirp, chirp. Apparently, they were nocturnal, like me. 
It was going to be a long night with those noisy crickets and a silent frog. I hopped on my wheel and tried to spin my irritation away. It didn't work. The only way to have a friend is to be one. <laughs>